do your thumbnails look like this? <clears throat> I sure hope not, because that's dog shit. I bet you want to make thumbnails more like this. That's a thumbnail that I put on one of my YouTube videos. So the reason I'm doing this video is because one of my viewers actually asked for a tutorial on how to cut out uh, cars and Rocket League thumbnails. So I figured I'd just go over like the entire Rocket League thumbnail. So my idea is we're going to start with like a blank Rocket League picture. I actually got this off of a dude's profile. He like takes really cool screenshots uh, and he posts them. And a lot of like famous YouTubers use them in their thumbnails. So I'll leave his profile in the description. Everything on there is like free to use. So yeah, don't be afraid to use that if you want to put those in your thumbnails. So basically, I'll just go over what he wanted to learn first and then just finish up the thumbnail. Like as if I'm just making a thumbnail for any other video. Uh, and that way you guys can see my process and everything I do. The first thing to do that a lot of people don't realize is you actually want to resize the image. Uh, so you go to image and then image size. And you want to make sure the resolution is 300. And for thumbnails, you want to make sure it's 1280 by 720. Because that's the highest resolution you can go without the file being too big for a thumbnail. And the reason you want 300 resolution is because it makes the image a little bit crisper. So like when you zoom in, you can see more of the pixels and stuff. So uh, you can press P for the pencil or it's this thing over here on the left. Um, and you want to start outlining the car. And then as you're like, you run out of space, say over here, you want to press H, which gives you the hand tool. Then you can move the screen down. Okay, so I'll start and we'll just time lapse this, me cutting out the car. Actually, before the time lapse, I should probably mention why I'm doing this. So the reason you'd want to cut out the car is so you can either put it in like a different Photoshop file. Um, like I've done that with my banner. I'll put an example of that up on screen now. And the other reason you'd want to do it is because you'd want to make the background a lot like darker uh, so that it sticks out. If you don't outline the car, it'll also get darker like the rest of the background. That might be confusing, but I'll show you what I mean in a minute. The car is really gonna pop out compared to the background once we darken the background. Uh, it also makes the text pop out more. So we'll just time lapse this real quick. Yeah, and I should probably mention if you make any mistakes, like just right click on the anchor point and then press delete anchor point. And you just wanna keep outlining the car. All right, now we're onto the boost. This is where it gets a little, a little weirder. You wanna just kind of outline the general area where the boost is still shining. And then later we're gonna go back and make this a bit better. Cause you'll see it looks weird once we start darkening the background, but we'll fix it up later. And if you make any mistakes like this, like it's a little jagged right here, you can just left click on the anchor point and you can kind of drag it up. And once you come around to the end, you just want to quickly connect everything back up. And now you've got a rough outline as you see here. And then you want to right click and go to make selection. Uh, just make sure your settings look like this and you're good. And then you want to grab either the like rectangle select tool or the lasso select tool. It doesn't matter which one. Then you want to right click on it again and it gives you some different options from the pen tool. So then you want to select layer via copy. And what that does is it creates a new layer above the background. So as you can see, when we delete the background, the car is still there. So this is how you get the car above everything else. I know there's still some like flaws in the car, but that's what I was talking about. We'll go over how to fix that later. Um, but another thing you should probably do uh, for outlining purposes is we should probably outline this remaining boost down here. So I'll get back to you once we've done that. Uh, another thing worth mentioning is once you get down here to the edge, you can just kind of click into this black void and it doesn't really matter. You just want to keep going. I know this looks kind of imperfect because there's still a lot of background visible in this outline, but that's because we're going to spruce it up later and you really want to capture all the shining areas of the boost. Uh, in order to give it that lens flare effect because you don't really want to get rid of that because that's what makes thumbnails look cool sometimes so yeah we'll do the same thing again 
go to mix selection and then grab one of these select tools and then layer via copy oh yeah yeah make sure you have the background selected when you're doing this because the boost doesn't exist in layer one uh, it only exists in the background so you need to copy it from the background and now we have that i'm gonna just put it up there doesn't really matter if you want you can rename these for like better organization i'll call this car so i know what i have selected here and i'll call this one boost so yeah um the next step i would probably do is to dim the background and you'll see why we do that so you want to select the background again and go to the hue saturation option and just like darken it the, uh, and like reduce the saturation that way the car sticks out a lot more and when you add text as well the text will stick out a lot so yeah, as you can see the boost looks kind of rough uh so we'll all go over how to fix that right now okay so in order to get rid of this like rough outline here what you want to do is select the brush make sure it's set to black and then go up here to the brush size and you know just make it whatever size you think is good uh, I would go a little smaller than that. Um, then make sure the hardness is set to zero. And then come over to your the layer that you want to blend with the background. And then add a layer mask icon, which is this button right here. Make sure it's selected. And then you should be able to start filling it in. So, hmm. alright, so if you do mess up, like I accidentally did the black brush here. You can just go up to window and then find history. Where is it? There we go, history. And then you can just come up here and delete any mistakes. So for some reason this doesn't work lately. Like this used to work fine for me. I don't know what happened, but it's just not doing anything. 10 seconds later. Okay, so I didn't really figure out the problem. Just keep messing, I didn't even do anything. But as you can see, it's working now. All I did was like tab out, look at a tutorial to make sure I was doing it right, which I was. So I literally didn't change anything and now it's just working. So yeah, um, I don't know what's up with that, but sometimes it's just a little spotty. So yeah, just kind of outline it and make the boost look good. And then I would do the same thing to your other boost layer because you can still see that jagged outline. So we want to fix that. The next thing you should probably do is add text, right? So we're going to, we're going to just put the text down there. Um, I guess since this is going to be the thumbnail for this video, well, I'll just start off with white text because it's easier to see. Um, and we'll drag it down a little bit. I guess since this is the thumbnail for this video, I'll just call it like thumbnails. There's a B, right? Thumbnails like this. And then I'll put like an arrow or something. I don't know, man. So that's too big, obviously. So we're going to make it smaller. Oh, and we didn't get the his dude why is this so laggy you want to make the text look a little bit cooler honestly my favorite text to use is just ariel <laughs> it's the simplest text but uh if you go to black it makes it a lot like bulkier and the reason this is so appealing is because uh like mobile platforms like the thumbnails are a lot smaller so you really need like really big text for them to see for them to actually see what it is so now let's go over how to like customize the text so the first thing i would do is right click your text layer and then go to blending options this is where you get all the gradients and inner shadows and stuff so my favorite thing to do is add a gradient uh i don't know what colors to use but usually black to white looks pretty decent but like that's too dark because i like to make it look silvery and less less black more silver um and then that looks pretty decent i would add a stroke to the outside um black on white looks pretty good but for some reason when you do like a white stroke i think it really pops on silver because it's like the same color at the top but as the silver fades to like more of a black the white pops more and more so i think that looks really cool that's just how i do it um and then if you want you could add an inner shadow uh, or an inner glow you can just mess around with these the settings are pretty self-explanatory if you just click on them because you can oh yeah this is how you enable or, or disable you can make it like a lot bigger but that looks dumb 
I would just go with whatever looks cool to you. So now I feel like this needs something else. So I'm gonna bring in like a red arrow <laughs> because why not? Red arrows are like, they're like the goat of YouTube, man. So yeah, you used to, in my other version of Photoshop, you could just drag that in, but for some reason that doesn't work on this one. So you can drag the like thing out here. <laughs> I don't even know what to call it. And then you have your layers of the thing that you just dragged out. So then you can put the red arrow in there like that, and then you can get rid of that. So yeah, for some reason it's not moving. If you ever get this, or you want to resize it, what you want to do is go up to edit. I My Photoshop is so laggy right now. I don't know what the problem is. Maybe it's because I'm recording. But yeah, you want to go up to edit, and then free transform. And that gives you like the hitbox of the arrow and everything, so you can move it around. Uh, yeah, I'll just point it at the car, because I don't know what else to point it at. You can also rotate it, but I don't want to rotate it. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna leave it. I think that's a good size. It fills a lot of the empty space there. All right, so I forgot a couple crucial things in the tutorial, so I'm just gonna go back to pretty much where we left off. Um, all I did was resize the text thumbnails, just made it bigger, and then I put like this on top of it. So we got that stacking effect that I really wanted to do earlier. Um, but yeah, that, I figured out the key to doing that was to make the text bigger on top. So that way, I think the problem before was the fact that you couldn't read thumbnails as well. So now it's a lot bigger. It doesn't take away as much of the image. So that looks pretty good. Um, the next thing we're going to do to enhance the text is what's called a clipping mask. So you want to grab your pen tool and go like just a little bit below the top of each letter here. And over on the right side, you want to click and hold and it gives you this drag option so you can make this like a kind of like a half circle and you want to try to make it as symmetrical as you can i think that looks pretty good and then you want to just uh outline whatever um below the text just as long as you have the whole text included um and then you want to make a new layer right above whichever text you're working on so we can just add a new layer and then you want to go over here to fill path and it doesn't really matter you can just press ok and then you want to head over here to fill and you want to put fill to zero and then you want to go and right click your new layer and go to blending options and you want to add an inner shadow so what i would do is just adjust the size and leave everything else at zero um i think that's the best way to do it or i mean maybe the distance you could change a little bit i think that looks cooler because it adds a little bit more shading so yeah i would i would mess with the distance a little bit but leave choke at zero and then size is up to you opacity will mess with opacity more after it's easier to tell what you want opacity to be when you're done with this step so then you want to right click on your text and duplicate layer it's probably a way to do that with hotkeys but yeah and then you want to just make your original one invisible and your new copy you want to right click and go to convert to smart object and you also want to convert the layer with um, the inner shadow to smart object so we'll convert that smart object and then you should be able to just right click on that uh, layer and press create clipping mask now you've got some fancier text in order to get rid of this thing uh, you want to grab the pen tool and then just delete the path and then it's all gone so yeah, once you've re-highlighted your new layer, I would mess with the opacity, because right now it looks a little like there's a very hard line. But if you turn the opacity down, it's a bit softer. It gives it that nice shading. So yeah, I like that quite a bit. So we're going to go with that. Um, and I won't show you guys this process again, because I just did, but I'm going to do the same thing with the text underneath. And we're done with that too. That looks nice and shiny. So this still looks a little plain though. So the next thing I would do is add like a background overlay. So uh, what you wanna do is find a couple colors that are present in the image. Uh, so you can click on the color and then it gives you a color picker. Um, I would just choose the color of the car. Um, then you wanna go click on your background and then click new layer. So it puts this layer only above the background. Um, and then you want to grab the pen tool and make it like really big uh, Probably like 800 or so. I think that's good And then what you want to do is just pick a side 
Um, since the text is purple on this side, I'm going to put the purple overlay on the left side. So we're going to do something like that and that. And then we might put a little bit more on that side. Um, and then what you want to do is make sure this layer is selected with your purple stuff you just put on there. And then this is the blend mode. You want to set this to overlay. So now it's just kind of purple in the background. Now we should probably do something to the right side as well. Again, this is just personal preference. All right, I'll choose maybe like a light blue. I tried yellow earlier and it did not look very good. Oh, I forgot to switch. Yeah, and I like to start like do the bottom corner over here and top corner over here. So it gives it like a diagonal fade cut, which looks really cool. One more thing you want to do is drag this layer above the hue saturation layer. Now it's like a lot brighter um, and more vibrant. If that's too vibrant, you could always turn down the opacity, uh, just depends on you. I'm going to go like somewhere in the middle there. I think that looks really good. And I'm going to say we're done because I think that looks really good. So if you guys enjoyed this tutorial or found it helpful, make sure to leave a like as it does support the channel. Uh, any comments, uh, like any questions you have, feel free to leave in the comments. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.